Hey guys, I got some requests because of the five things you may not know about your Fender Strat video uh, to do a five things you may not know about your Gibson Les Paul video. So I thought, you know, that would be fun. Let's go ahead and do it. So let's start. <laughs> One, Burst Bucker Pro Pickup. The Burst Bucker Pro Pickup is not a high output pickup. Most people believe that it's actually like kind of Gibson's new, yeah, this has got some, some, some power behind it. The truth is, it's the lowest output pickup. It actually has less output than the 57 Classic. It's called a Burst Bucker because it was originally seen on the Sunburst Les Pauls. And it actually was made before the technology of the 57 Classic where they were able to wind each coil evenly. So some of them have uneven coil winds, which gives it a kind of different sound. And they were pre-wax potting, so they don't, are not wax potted as well, so they kind of have a feedback kind of issue. Now, there's a Burst Bucker 1, 2, and 3 and a Pro. Each one will have more output and be slightly different. However, keeping in mind, if you're looking for that vintage, low output Gibson sound, the Burst Bucker is probably what you're looking for, even though you think it's the high output pickup. Number dose. Maple is heavier than mahogany. By square inch, it is gonna give you more weight than mahogany does. Now, why is that worth mentioning? Well, it's because a lot of people believe the mahogany is where all the weight comes from. But that's why SGs and mahogany only Les Pauls tend to be lighter than Les Pauls with a maple cap. The maple caps very rarely are light. And so it's very hard to get a, a maple top Les Paul that isn't got some weight behind it. Three. The tailpiece on a Gibson Les Paul has an actual important purpose. If you look at the vintage Les Paul, the very first one, it had a single piece bridge, kind of like how Paul Reed Smith uses. Later it was decided to go to the two piece bridge, but there's a very important reason why. The tailpiece, by raising, raising it and lowering it, allows you to adjust the, basically the string tension, the way it feels. One of the big tricks is to wrap the strings over the bridge, like seen there. Now what that does is gives you a slighter string angle. In other words, the more that string angle right there, the more the string will feel taut. One of the big things that other companies do is they'll do string through body, like you see here, and they'll actually stagger the string. See how different ones can have a longer distance to change that break angle over the bridge. Again, you can adjust the way your Gibson feels by just raising and lowering that tailpiece. Something fun to experiment with. Number four, one of the biggest reasons the Gibson Les Paul has trouble staying in tune is that the G and D string immediately break right and left after crossing the nut. This causes a binding issue. Sometimes you can hear this on your, uh, on your strings when you're tuning it and you hear like a tink, a sound that sounds like a high pitch pluck, kind of like this, or like that. Now the reason uh, is because the string is binding in the nut. So you need to make sure your nut is properly filed and smooth, and then also it's lubricated. That will help the strings and it will keep the guitar in tune. Number five, your grandpa told you that a Gibson plays better than a Fender. Well, he's right. The reason is, is because the Gibson is a 12 inch radius fretboard. What does that mean? It means this fretboard is flatter than let's say the original Fenders at seven and a quarter, which were much rounder. Now also Gibson shortens the scale. It is 24 and three quarters measurement from the bridge to the nut, where Fender will be 25 and a half inches. Shortening the scale lets you require less tension on the string to receive, to get it to pitch. And therefore, the strings feel a little easier to bend and play. This combination of a flatter fretboard with less tension makes it kind of a smoother, easier guitar to do bends and do solos with. That is why your grandpa preferred it over his old Fender Strat. All right, guys. If you haven't hit the subscription button and you'd like to, please go ahead and click that now. It lets me know that you're out there and you'd like to see more videos and it motivates me to make them. If you like the videos, please hit like. Please put comments. If you knew some of these things, put that. If you didn't know some of these things, put that. The only thing guitar players like more than watching cool videos with seeing gear and new things is to see what other guitar players think of it and see other points of view. So you can always add to the video's experience by putting some cool comments in the side. As always, I want to thank you for your time and know your gear.